Hey guys, I'm here with Cody from ramenguidejapan.com and we're gonna tell you guys about our top 5 ramen of 2018. I got my list prepared and um, my number 5 of 2018 um, and I have to say I really like thick, rich ramen styles was Menya Musashi for me. Okay. Yeah, you know it, you've yeah. been there probably many times. Yeah. Um, for me, just the, the meat that you get there is just so amazing. The like the pork belly blocks, yeah. and it's always so satisfying. It's it's like eating noodles with thick gravy. It's just absolutely delicious. Yeah, that definitely has to be in my top five for 2018. Yeah. Well, I guess my number five would be. Um, I have, it's a small place. It's called Hatsune. Hatsune. Okay. Um, it's in uh, Ogikubo, and uh, the shop has been open since I think about 1965. Oh wow, that's, but, um, that's long. Yeah, yeah, I've always heard about it, but I actually just went for the first time in 2018. And um, yeah, they have this, they serve a traditional Chinese style tanmen. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's one of the most famous uh, tanmen and just the oldest uh, ramen restaurants in Tokyo. So. I nice. recommend a visit. Haven't, haven't heard about that one yet. Um, definitely worth checking out for 2019. Let's keep going. Um, for me, number four in Shibuya, um, a place called Nakajima. Okay. It's a, it's a Chinese restaurant, but they also are famous for their tantanmen. Mm -hmm. And they have like this very rich sesame and uh, yeah, rich sesame flavored tantanmen that just has like the perfect balance between the sesame flavor, the, the chili flavor, and um, it's just a very, very satisfying bowl to eat. And for me, because I'm often in the Shibuya area, it's e really easy for me to, to get there. Mm -hmm. It's like five minutes walking from the station. Okay. And it's something that I have been to several times uh, in 2018. And I think that's one of my criteria for <laughs> my top of uh, 2018, yeah. So Nakajima. Um, yeah, I guess number four for me would be homemade ramen, Muginai. Okay. Ah, I heard about that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. The lines there are uh, actually pretty ridiculous. Um, <laughs> when okay. I went, I take pictures from my, from my blog and my website. So uh, they open at 11 and I came at around 9.50 because I came straight from work. I had to go to the office just to do some stuff and ended up coming way too early so I thought I'd take pictures um, when no one was there. And at 9.50 there was already 10 people in line. Wow. <laughs> okay. So I ended up... 9.50? When did they open? 11 o'clock. Oh, that's incredible. So I stood in line from 9.50 but yeah, it was fantastic. They served both uh, shoyu and shio. Um, they got the Tabulogu Bronze Star in 2019 as well. Okay. Um, yeah, it's uh, one of my favorite just all around. They're both their, uh, their shoyu and their, their niboname, sorry. Mm -hmm. I guess is uh, the correct term for their shio, but it's fantastic. Pretty good. So number three would be for me, um, not a big surprise, Minya Ito. Okay. So I've been there and actually I made a video about it. And um, yeah, that was... Uh, it's a it life changing bowl. It's a life changing bowl, yeah. It's um, when people tell you about like, wow, oh, it's a very balanced bowl. Mm -hmm. Like they perfected it. Yeah. Like there's nothing you 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 would like to, them to change. Like even if you if you like certain styles a little bit more, you just feel like, oh no, they found the exact perfect balance of saltiness, fattiness. The noodles are just incredible. And you have to wait for a long time, but it's worth every second of waiting. It deserves all the praise it gets and has to be on a you know, to-do list for every ramen lover. I on a side note, they actually changed the, uh, the, the system for how you uh, get the they, ramen they, now. When did they do that? Um, I think it started last year around May. Okay. But uh, now you, um, they start opening their store at around, I think it's at 7.30 and um, when you line up, um, they give you a ticket for what time yeah. to come back for their... For Actually, the that you can see exactly that system in my video. Uh -huh. So you, you get there, yeah, you get the ticket, you buy the ticket and then you get a time yeah. for when to come back, well, come back. Which is great because now there's a couple of bars around the station, I think Shinkoiwa. Yeah. And then you can just go drink a beer, you know, 
had to eat a pretzel or something like that. Yeah, and <laughs> if you're if you're a tourist and you end up coming there and you have quite a, a long wait, um, there's also a, a McDonald's that um, offers free oh, yeah. Wi-Fi. Okay. So if you ever need um, some free Wi-Fi to kill some time, I would recommend going to the McDonald's there. Fantastic. So. What's your number three? Um, yeah, so my number three would definitely be my favorite show you around restaurant. Okay. Which is uh, called Ramea Toy Box. To a toy Box? Yeah. I think it's also um, Michelin 25. It is, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's one of the first times where I actually ate a show you around and, and thought, wow, this is like different from all the different <laughs> all the other show you around in restaurants in Tokyo. Okay. And that's like one of the, the main places that I went that just kinda of reinvigorated my my efforts I guess to explore other ramen restaurants. Right. Just to think that um, a style that's so readily available can be made that's so good was uh, yeah, it was not only a toy box. It's incredible. I mean I felt the same recently when I went to Menya Ishin in uh, in Meguro, mm -hmm. but that was in 2019, so they're out for 2018 for this this one. But yeah, I, I felt really the same. Um, I'm also not the biggest fan of, of so, uh, like shoyu ramen, uh -huh. shio ramen, yeah. like the rich ones. But uh, yeah, I, I can totally relate what you're what you're saying. So now we're we're getting into the top two, and um, for me, a place that I, I had not under radar at all. They opened, I think, also only last year, a place called Mendokoro Ishin. Mm -hmm. And um, they are in Shinjuku. Actually, Brian from Ramen Adventures uh, just released a video of it. And actually, I have a video about the other style that they're offering there um, in production and should be released in the next couple of weeks. And um, maybe it's already out, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. But uh, they, they offer two very interesting bowls. One is a tori paitan, so chicken, creamy chicken based with a uh, sea bream called madai mm -hmm. um, or in Japanese madai and it, it makes this bowl very very interesting from a flavor profile that you you didn't you don't really get at other places and um, the second bowl that they have is a uh, shoyu with uh, oyster okay but so they they don't put the oyster on top the oyster is in the broth so they they cook the oyster in it and um, it makes it also completely different than what you know um, very very interesting flavors and uh, the toppings are just top-notch you know you got your sous vide chicken you got the perfectly uh, prepared pork it's just well-rounded and for me the surprise yeah for 2018 definitely yeah. um, yes I guess number two for me would be uh, man chicken Manchikan. It's a uh, so the owner there actually has um, a separate store that's right across the street that does also the Sibri snapper ramen, but his second brand um, does duck okay. duck ramen and um, yeah they make their own um, foie gras in house and they have a abura soba that comes with the foie gras and uh, yeah it's only a thousand yen and, and to that's think cheap. that you could get some high quality foie gras. Um, in your ramen for only a thousand yen. It was a surprise, but yeah. <laughs> that's not a lot of money for a foie gras. Yeah. Wow. That's that's really interesting. So now we're coming to the number ones. Number right? one spot. Number one spot for me is the store that I've went to most this year. Um, it's for no surprise to anyone who knows me. It's Tanaka Shoten. In Adachiku, it's a little bit off the beaten path. You have to take a uh, train for like, I don't know, 15 minutes and then walk another 10 minutes from Akihabara, I would say. So it takes like at least half an hour. But like most tourists will go to Akihabara, so it's not, it's not too bad. And they offer Hakata style tonkotsu. And they just perfected it. In my opinion, it's, it's the place to get Hakata tonkotsu and um, they only serve that there's no other thing item on the menu you can get different topics more um, green onions or less <laughs> but they don't offer anything else they all have like at all times like five huge pots with like bones and fat sticking out boiling and it's just it's this stinky goodness creamy rich 
ah, oh, it's perfection. For me, definitely my number one. And if you like that store, they have another store that is like 30 meters down the road. I don't know how much that is in feet, like 100 feet <laughs> down the road. And um, they offer chuka soba, so mm -hmm. it's called tanaka soba. And they offer this clear broth. And if the one is closed, just go to the other one. They're like equally good. But I like the creamy one just a little bit better. What about your number one? Yeah, um, I guess my number one will have to be in Shibuya. It's called uh, Yakumo. Yakumo. Yes, I know that one. Yeah. They uh, they have what? I guess they have um, two different types of shoyu, and uh, they have the white and they have the black. Mm -hmm. And they also have two different types of dumplings. They have the shrimp and they have the pork. But when okay. you look at the pork and the shrimp, they're distinctly white and black. Oh, and when you go okay. into their store, the decor is also white and black. Ah. And so everything about the about the shot just reflects on this concept of um, of like a yin and yang, black and white. Interesting. And uh, yeah. yeah, just the overall. I mean, the wontons are fantastic, and as is uh, both the white and the uh, dark black um, broth. But yeah, the concept that they have with the black and white being able to be seen throughout the restaurant and the bowl, it was both um, great flavor and just a great experience. Right, right. It's in uh, Nakameguro, right? It's between uh, Ikejiri actually, Ohashi yeah, and... They just moved to Ikejiri Ohashi. Um, their original location, I think, was in Meguro, but... Yeah, I think like two years ago they mm -hmm. opened their new store in Ikeji Ohashi. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's it's when you walk in, it, it looks like a um, an art gallery because of yes, how clean and yeah. chic it is. I know what you mean. But they and they also have quite long lines at times. Yeah, um, you wanna you wanna try to get there as it opens um, because if you try to get there any time past six and all the salary men, Japanese salary men are coming off work, you're gonna have a bad time waiting. So. Definitely. That one is also from uh, on my list for the Mission Mission 25 thing. Mm -hmm. they'll, they're also mentioned. It's it's a it's a very nice place. I've been there, but I haven't made a video about that. Yeah. So um, yeah, definitely can't wait to try that one again. Yeah. And maybe a bowl that I haven't tried yet. Yeah, definitely. I I completely understand why it's your number one. So that's all. Those were our top five for 2018. For 2018. And. Um, Let's see what we can come up with for 2019. Yeah. Make sure to also go to his website, ramenguidejapan.com. Check out what he has to say about all the bowls that he's eating. He's eating way more than like I show on my channel. <laughs> and um, yeah, if you like my videos, click like, subscribe, and you'll see this guy again. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.